Alright, this video is the last of the two practice problems or extra practice before the quiz dealing with gases that is dealing with these types of equations. Now, I want to work out the even problems and the odd answer should be online. Again, remember that you're going to have access to the conversions, you'll have access to the different types of equations, it's just a matter of you rearranging the variables, plugging in the correct conversions and solving for these problems. And on the quiz, you will see the four different types of gas problems, dealing with partial pressures, uh, dealing with Boyle's Law, Charles Law, and Avogadro's Principle. Now again, you don't need to know exactly what those laws or principles are, just realize that if it's using one of these equations, it's one of those laws. So let's look at the first question. It says a mixture of 82.5 grams of hydrogen gas, and this is question two, we're doing the evens. A mixture of 82.5 grams of hydrogen gas and 278.2 grams of helium gas has a total pressure of 560 kilopascal. So here's what I would recognize. I would say that I have a total pressure here. So if you are given a question where it says it's a total pressure, then you're going to be using this guy right here. In other words, you're going to be taking the parts of the gas, in other words, in this case here we have hydrogen and helium, and you're going to find out what each of those pressures are that make up that 560 kilopascals. Alright, um, the question wants to know what is the partial pressure for each gas in kilopascals? So the first thing that you have to do whenever you see grams of any gas, especially for what we're going to be doing for a while here, change those grams in the moles. All right, so we'll take our 82.5 grams of hydrogen. And again, since it ends in gen or I-N-E, that means it's diatomic. There's two of those. And you convert that into moles. So you have two times 1.008, but that's on your periodic table. And we'll find out how many moles of that we have. Also, we have 278.8. 2 grams of helium, and we're going to change that into moles, realizing that helium is a noble gas, but it is not diatomic because it does not end in gen or I and E, and it has a molar mass of 4.0. So let's find out what the number of moles for each of these are, and this is 40.9 moles. Do not round the mole amounts, all right? Now I know that on one example I rounded because it was very, very close to the whole number, but we don't want to round too much, all right? So the, my calculator says 40.9226. Again, if you're showing three sig figs, that's very good. And this is 69. We'll say six, even though my calculator says 69.55. What I'm going to do is add these two values together. So total number of moles of gas in the system. So I get 110.5 moles of total gas. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find out what the pressure of each gas is. So to find the partial pressure for each, the partial pressure due to hydrogen, and I have to ask myself how many parts of this total sample of gas is hydrogen? 40.9. So I'm going to make a fraction or a percentage or, yeah, let's just leave it as a fraction or a percentage. So I have 40.9 moles is due to the hydrogen of the 110.5 moles of gas. And so again, it's a little under half. And the total pressure is 560, so I will multiply that, that's my fraction, times the 560, yeah, 560 kilopascals, and I'll get a pressure. I want to do the same thing with the helium. So in this case, I have 69.6 moles of the total sample of gas is due to the helium, divided by the total number of moles of gas. And again, I want to multiply that times the total pressure. And let's get some values for that. And hydrogen is 207 
kilopascals. And actually it's 207.442. And the partial pressure due to the helium is 353. And what we want to do is just a real quick check, make sure that these add up to equal 560. And I can look real quickly and say that 3 plus 7 is 0 plus 1, and we're good. So we have 560 kilopascals. So that's not necessary as a check, but your values that you get for your partial pressures better add up to the total. Number four, if a sample of gas has a volume, V1, of 598 centimeters cubed, when the pressure is 350 kilopascals, so P1, what is the pressure, P2, question mark, when the volume, V2, 133 centimeters cubed? Also, it says that the temperature and the amount of gas remains constant. Now, again, that last sentence really doesn't have any significance now. Later on in the week, that will have a lot more significance. So, again, you have a volume and a pressure relationship. So what you want to do is make sure that you look at the correct type of equation that you want to use here. So since it's a volume and a pressure, then we want to use this one right here. Okay. So we have P1V1 equals P2V2. So that's our equation. We'll start with P1V1 is equal to P2V2. And it's looking for P2. So what that means is we will divide V2 on both sides. And be sure that you show the, var the variables rearranged. So we're going to have P1, V1 over V2 is equal to P2. All right. And then since our centimeters cubed are good, we don't have to change anything. Our pressure is in kilopascals. And it doesn't say anything about changing the pressure. So... Let's not worry about it. Let's move this over so it's a little easier to work with. So our initial pressure is, I'm sorry, yeah, our initial pressure is 350 kilopascals. Our initial volume is 598 centimeters cubed. Our final volume is 133 centimeters cubed. And let's get a value. So again, the centimeters cubed will cancel out. We're left with kilopascals, which is pressure. And I get 1,574, so 1.5, we'll say 7, times 10 to the 3, and that is in kilopascals. And then you can kind of ask yourself, does that answer seem reasonable? Well, in this case, we have our initial pressure and volume, and the volume was 598, and then we really reduced the size of the, of the container. We made the, the volume smaller. So again, as the volume decreases, that means that the pressure will increase. And it did. It went up to 1,570 as opposed to the 350. So that's a quick check, just kind of going through your laws. Don't have to know the name of the person, but again, it's nice to know that if the pressure goes up, the volume should go down. If the volume goes down, then the pressure should go up, which is the case here. All right, number six. A balloon has an initial volume of 50 liters, and the gas had an initial mass, so we're going to change that mass in the moles, so we'll find out how many moles that is. The question asks, asks, calculate the number of moles, so there's your N2, so question mark, of helium gas remaining when the volume is changed to 500 milliliters. All right, so again, we have our helium. I guess I have some fascination with helium. So we're going to change that gram amount of helium in the moles. So one mole of helium. Again, it's four grams, so this should be about two points. And we get two point six seven five. We don't want to round that too much. Again, don't don't get round happy and just say, oh, that's three. No, that's not three. It's not even close to three. 
All right, so we have a volume and number of moles relationship. So let's look at our equations. And we can say that, oops, that the volume and the number of moles, since we're looking for our number of moles, we're going to use that equation right there, where we're looking for the final number of moles. And so we want the number of moles on top, the volume on the bottom. Okay. So in this case here, uh, the equation that we'll use, M1 over V1 is equal to M2 over V2. And we are looking for N2. And we converted our N1, so we converted our grams into N1. So let's move this guy up since we're looking for V N2. So my equation now looks like this, where I have N1 times V2 over V1 is equal to N2. Okay. So once we have that, actually let's scoot that guy over. Okay, so our N1 is the 2.675 moles. The V2 is 500 milliliters. The um, V1 is 50 liters. I'm sorry, 50 milliliters, right? Oh, it's 50 liters. Ah, bummer. So we have to change the liters in the milliliters. So let's do that. 50 liters. So one liter, 1,000 milliliters. So that is 50,000 milliliters. That's a bummer. So that means that we'll have 50,000 on the bottom. So this is going to be a small number of moles. I'm glad. And be careful when reading these questions because, again, I read it rather quickly but I didn't comprehend that we had two different volume units there. So always check to make sure you have the same units when you're plugging it into the math or the expression. Once you have it into the expression, the only way we're going to be able to cancel it out is if you have a like units. So in this case here, the milliliters are able to cancel. We're left with moles, which is uh, N2, what we're looking for. So in this case, the answer is 0 0.026, we'll say 8 moles. Of helium. And, and again, think about it. Here's our initial, or I'm sorry, we started off with um, 2.675 moles and 50,000 milliliters. As the volume went from 50,000 to 500, the number of moles should also decrease. So as the number of moles increase, so does the volume. If the moles decrease, so does the volume. Okay. Let's look at the last question. Number eight, if a sample of gas occupies a volume of 52.4 milliliters at a temperature of 223.6 degrees Celsius, we're going to do something with that. What is the temperature? So question mark T2. Uh, would the gas occupy if the final volume was 0.113 liters? Okay, so we do have different units. We also have to change the degree Celsius to Kelvin. So let's just do all that right now. So degrees Celsius to Kelvin, 223.6. You need to add 273 to that, which is around 496.6 Kelvin. I believe so. Yeah. And then we need to change either the milliliters to liters or the liters to milliliters. I think it's easier just to change the liters to milliliters. So 0.133 liters. We're going to multiply that by 1,000. So that gives me 133 milliliters. Okay. So we have our temperature and we have our volume. So we have a temperature volume relationship. So which equation should we use? That is correct. So we're looking, whoops, so we're looking for the final temperature, so we'll use that equation since it is asking for a final temperature and we have an initial temperature and a starting and finishing volume. So we'll use that equation. 
So let's put that down. So we have T1 over V1 is equal to T2 over V2. And again, we're looking for T2, so that means move or multiply V2 on both sides. So now you have T1 times V2 divided by V1 is equal to T2. And then we can plug our values in. So T1 is 496, 0.6 Kelvin. And our final volume, what was that? Oh, that was our 133 milliliters. And our starting was 52.4. And again, the volumes cancel and you'll be left with a temperature which is in Kelvin. Now, the <coughs> excuse me. The question does not ask you to go back to degrees Celsius, which is a good thing. We really don't care what the temperature is in degrees Celsius. And this gives us a temperature of 1,260 Kelvin. Now, let's think about this. As the volume went from 52.4 to a higher value, 133, the volume went up. So that must mean that the temperature also went up. And it was at 496. Now it's at 1260. Okay. Hopefully our math is right. That gives us a very good check. At least we're headed in the correct direction. All right. Uh, make sure that you do the odd problems, and you can check them after you finish it. Don't, don't copy the work down. Good luck on the quiz.